guys, my name is Vanessa if you are new and today I am sharing a pretty big meal prep. Now, when I meal prep, I always make a huge list, more than I ever get done. And some days it does take me more than just like one afternoon or one morning or whatever I like block out time for that. So the what I'm about to share with you guys, I actually did over two days and the two days were about five days apart. So I started at the beginning of the week and I meal prepped some stuff that I knew that we would just want on hand. And then that weekend I meal prepped a few things for the following week. So instead of just breaking it apart, I just went ahead and put everything together. So you guys just kind of give an idea of how I meal prep and I do not meal prep every single week. It just, whenever I feel like getting a few things done, whenever I see that we have stuff on hand that I can go ahead and make our lives easier and whip that out in a quick afternoon while the kids are at school or on the weekend when my husband loves to be in the kitchen. So whenever I try to plan things on a weekend that we don't have a whole lot going on, he loves to help me out in the kitchen. So that's kind of what I'm sharing with you guys today. One day where I'm meal prepping a whole bunch of stuff and then on the weekend when my husband is helping me get a few things done for the following week. So I'm gonna go ahead and backtrack a little bit and take you guys down to my kitchen counters and get some stuff done to help out our family of six. So hopefully this will give you guys some meal prep inspiration. We're gonna start out this meal prep with actually food for our dogs. We like to add like a wet component into their dry food. Originally it was just at night, but now it is in the morning as well. They have become quite the fans of this stuff. So I meant to grab more chicken out, but just pulled two out. So this is definitely a smaller batch. We do have four dogs in our home um, and you can see the size of these chicken breasts. So these are actually left over from a meal that I use the fresh ingredients for something else and we just never use the chicken. So I'm gonna add that into my crock pot with a bag of cut green beans from my freezer and this entire can of pumpkin. It's very, very good for their skin and hair and a can of beef broth just to make it a little bit more soupy. I have a ton of this in my pantry and want to start utilizing <laughs> things that I already have on hand instead of going out and buying more. I'm not going to add rice this time. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's just going to be quick and super simple. I am going to throw all of this in the crock pot together and let it cook so it gets nice and mushy. Again, it's for the dogs. <laughs> Easy to mix up into their dry food. But whenever I'm meal prepping, I try to get Get the thing that's going to take the longest set first and that way I can just get that going. So like I mentioned, I'm just going to dump all of this into my crock pot. I got my lid on and I'm just going to let this cook on low for four hours. And then once my timer is up, I will come back and shred up the chicken. All right, so while I'm, I'm taking you guys along with me today as I do things instead of keeping recipes together. So dog food is still cooking, but now I'm going to make some homemade buttermilk ranch dressing. Um, we just went through the rest of our like craft or Hidden Valley, not craft, Hidden Valley ranch dressing. So I was like, you know what? It's the perfect time. Let's go ahead and make some fresh stuff instead of buying the prepackaged bottle ones. This always tastes better. Anyway, sometimes convenience wins out. Oh, I know. Um, but this time we are going to make some. So these are the only ingredients I'm using. A super simple mayonnaise. This is the only thing that I had to like buy that I don't typically buy, buttermilk. Then we've got sour cream and I get ranch in bulk just because we use it quite often and sometimes I have a hard time finding the little individual packets when they're sold out or whatever. So I just buy the ranch in bulk. Normally when I make salad dressing, this is just fine. However, if I feel like it's too full, I did grab a ball jar just in case. But like I said, typically I just put everything in here, give it a good shake. This is a perfect container. I've had it forever. I don't even know where I got it from, but I'll try to find one similar uh, because it's super easy to pour. Also, you just mix everything in here and you've got your dressing and you keep it in the fridge. So I'll try to link it in my Amazon store, but let's go ahead and start mixing this up. So we're gonna start with about one cup of mayo, half a cup of sour cream, or you can also use Greek yogurt if you wanted to go that route. Half a cup of the buttermilk, yeah, see, that is probably gonna be too full. Let's see, I'm gonna add in two tablespoons, oh, it might just work, of the ranch dressing. Okay, I'm gonna get my lid on. You could just put all this in a bowl and mix it, 
but I just like being able to shake it. So any kind of cup with a lid, and I'm just gonna go to town and mix this up. It's gonna take just a little bit, just because my container is completely full to the top. All right, ranch dressing is done. I did taste test it and added another tablespoon. So three tablespoons total of the Hidden Valley, the ranch seasoning mix, and it did all fit in this. So I can put my a jar up, but I just took the lid off so I could show you that. It took me maybe like three minutes of vigorously shaking this bad boy up. But now we have some fresh ranch, ranch dressing on hand for the next few weeks. One thing that I love to meal prep, just because I know my kids will eat it if it is prepped, is hard boiled eggs and that is what I love my instant pot the most for. Well, I say that, I love my instant pot. There's so many things you can use this for. Um, definitely when you don't have a stove, <laughs> I've been using the saute function on my instant pot. It's just like a stove top. So I'm going to get one dozen eggs. It doesn't matter the amount of eggs that you put in here. You do wanna use a trivet of some, some type in here um, so your eggs are not sitting on the bottom and then one cup of milk because if you are using an instant pot or any kind of pressure cooker, the liquid is what you need to get the pot to come to pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of my eggs in here. So I've got my eggs, my liquid on the trivet. I'm getting my lid on. Make sure it is sealing, not venting again, so it pressurizes properly. And then there's a whole bunch of different methods. You just kinda do trial and error and figure out what works best for you. I was doing the 555 method for a while, but I've come to realize that I like it better my button or my pot does have a manual button which just puts it on high pressure. I do not want 10 minutes though. I'm just gonna do three minutes and then once it comes to pressure, it cooks for three minutes, I'm going to let it sit. It automatically will go to keep warm and start counting up. I'm going to let it count up for three minutes as well. And then at the end of that three minutes, I will come over here and turn my knob from sealing to venting and release any of the extra pressure. All right, so my three minute like countdown is up. Cook time's over, natural release is over. I released the rest of the pressure and now I am taking my eggs out and giving them into a bowl that I have cold water and some ice in and I'm going to let them sit in here for another uh, three-ish minutes. All right, my eggs are done. I just rinsed them off, peeled them. Well, I peeled them, rinsed them off. I like to keep them in a container. Sometimes I will put a paper towel down just in case there's a little extra moisture that will collect from them. I did cook 12, but one of them I dropped in the trash can <laughs> as I was peeling it. It happens, so I just left it in the trash can. All right, I always get requests. Sometimes I forget to cut one up, so I will go ahead and snack on one. I'm gonna have to grab some salt and pepper. Do you guys just like hard boiled eggs by themselves or do you add a little salt and pepper? So that way you guys can see the inside. There we go, no gray ring. Just You just have to test it out. I feel like everybody likes their eggs a little differently, but the three, three, three method, which is cook on high pressure for three minutes, let them sit in there and natural release for three minutes, then take them out and put them in an ice bath for three minutes. So that is just what works for me. But there's our hard boiled eggs. I'll go ahead and eat this one for a snack. And then we've got several more in the fridge for the kids to snack on throughout the week. All right, I wasn't filming because this part does get messy depending on how much liquid you have in here and I didn't feel like dirtying anything else and pulling the chicken out and shredding it. So I totally shredded it in the crock pot. I'll get to clean my backsplash for the first time since it got installed. But if you guys haven't seen this hack, I mean, a lot of people use it now, it's all over the place, but use a stand mixer if you're doing a large amount of chicken or just a hand mixer to shred your chicken and it is done in seconds. So now I am gonna leave this sitting here for a little while because I want to be able to use this tonight and I need it to cool off. So I'm gonna let it sit here, let it cool off. That way the dogs can have some of this with their dinner tonight. But it is nice and mushy, just like they like it. And they totally know that it's for them too because they are all around my feet right now. Now I've got some dog food done for them. And everybody always asks me how much this lasts. I have four dogs, so it does not last me very long, especially now that they get it not only at night, but in the morning. 
So I do supplement, I do buy the convenience packs as well at the store, it's just whenever I have like extra ingredients on hand and I can you know, have the time, make the time to throw it together one day, I try to make their food as often as possible, but I do purchase the, the cans as well. All right, we are moving along. It is later in the afternoon because life. I have not just been in the kitchen meal prepping. I've done other things, but that's why I'm breaking this up into two days. So now I am going to whip up this box of wild blueberry muffin mix. I haven't made blueberries in a while, and this was just a random. I was down the aisle that these were in at the store and I have another box as well that I'm gonna try to do today. But I wanted to go ahead and make them. My kids love muffins and I have this new bread box that I'll show you guys when the muffins are all done. So I want to fill that up just to set out on the kitchen counter. It's the little things. So I picked this up and you do need water, vegetable oil, and eggs. So I've got these ingredients out and you're basically just mixing it all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip these up. And then I love these silicone liners. I bought them in a huge pack off of Amazon. They are linked in my storefront if you guys wanna check them out. But I'm just gonna make um, regular size muffins out of these like cupcake muffins out of this box. My oven is going to be preheat, preheating to 400 degrees. And then how long do I need to bake these for? 18 to 22 minutes. So um, while these are baking, I'll go ahead and start mixing up the second box that I have. Okay, I'm actually gonna do the little tip that this box says. It says before you bake, sprinkle top with sugar to add a sweet crunch. So I have a little bit of sugar in this container right here and I'm just gonna add a little sprinkle to the top of each of these. And then I'm gonna get them in the oven and let them bake. It says 18 to 22 minutes on the box for standard size and while these are baking, I'm gonna whip up those lemon ones. All right, so I only have one like regular cupcake pan. I was gonna make the muffins. I have a muffin pan, but those are just too big for my kids. So I am going to use this mini loaf pan and then that way I can cut them in half and make them more like muffin size for the kids. So I went ahead and I sprayed it and I'm gonna get my a mix in here. I'm not gonna do the little sugar tip on here because this box that I got actually came with a little glaze to put on the top when they are all done. All right, so because these are bigger than, they're like double a muffin, um, I got six out of this pan, but I am gonna cut them in half, so I'll have 12 total. I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven, and then we will have two different kinds of muffins in a little bit. All right, I think I'm gonna have a love-hate relationship with this bread box that I mentioned earlier when I was starting the muffins because now I'm gonna want it to be filled all the time, but my thighs and my butt are not gonna want this to be filled all the time. I think that looks so cute. They're really good. Yum yum, I'm actually splitting one of the lemon loaves with my daughter right now and it tastes so good. I don't know if I've ever actually made anything with poppy seed in it. I'm not sure, but super yummy. And then the kids, you can see it, there's supposed to be 12 in there, but some of the kids already snagged some because it is after school time already, but. All right, we got some breakfast items prepped for the next several days. All right, so I did go ahead and get the dog food. They've already eaten a little bit of this with their food tonight. This is the rest. I'm gonna get this in the fridge and this will last me maybe this week <laughs> if I am um, not too generous on the amount that I add to their dry food. All right, you guys, so for this lunch that I'm about to prep, I'm just gonna do it quick and easy. I'm gonna show you guys the ingredients. I will have the recipe that I am following linked in the description box. I did find it online. It's one that I think my oldest daughter is really going to like. So I've got all my ingredients here. We're gonna be using some whole wheat spaghetti, a can of chickpeas, some sesame seeds, almond butter, crushed red pepper, rice vinegar, sesame seed oil, a little bit of pure maple syrup, soy sauce, lime juice, some ginger and garlic, and then I'm going to be using my KitchenAid with a spiralizer mixer or attachment to um, spiralize the zucchini, and hopefully these carrots might be too small. I might have to like hand grate these, but we're going to grate these or spiralize these as well. So let me go ahead and get all of this together. Like I said, the recipe will be in the description box, but I'll show you guys how it looks when everything is all done. All right, the uh, pasta salads are ready. If you guys hear that in the background, I'm starting the next lunch. I'm gonna share that with you guys. I did cook the entire box, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this pasta 
in a baggie in the freezer and that way it'll be a quick dinner one night later on i'll just have to add some sauce uh maybe just throw it in the microwave who knows don't get triggered if you guys don't like microwaves uh but here's the cold pasta salad for lunch i thought i was gonna be able to be able to make more but the zucchini i had was a little bent and i couldn't spiralize the whole thing so want want I made what I could. I was able to get three out of it. That is perfectly fine. So I've got the chickpeas, the pasta, the carrot, the zucchini, and then I topped it with some sesame seeds and some green onions. Um, because we are eating these at home, we're not taking these out. I just left the sauce in here and we'll be able to drizzle it on top when we are ready. But if you're taking it to go, just you know, put it in some little containers and stick it in there and you'll be good to go. But this looks so good. I definitely think my oldest daughter is really going to enjoy it. All right, so next up, another lump lunch option for this week. I'm making some egg roll in a bowl. Um, super easy, you know, lower carb, right after Halloween, trying to do what we can. So we've already got the ground pork cooked up. I do add onion and garlic powder to pretty much everything, any kind of meat ground meat that I'm cooking. So I did add that just for an extra flavoring. I'm going to be adding in some um, Fiesta slaw or any kind of coleslaw, about 12 ounces that you like. And then I've got some garlic and ginger here, some sesame oil for topping. I'm gonna use the sesame seeds just like with the cold pasta salad as well as some green onion. And then for the sauce, I'm just gonna use these three ingredients. So I've got some Lakanto, some apple cider vinegar, and soy sauce. So let me go ahead and turn my heat back on Then we'll whip up the sauce and get this all put together. All right, you guys, so our egg roll in a bowl is done. I separate it into three bowls. I added some green onion that I just chopped up and the sesame seeds. So I've got three of lunches for this week. Okay, I forgot to share this, but while I was getting the egg roll in a bowl done, I went ahead, I had a, I think it was three pounds total. I already tossed the package in the trash but I just started browning up and cooking all of this breakfast sausage. There's a huge log that we get from, I think Costco or Sam's, I can't remember which one, um, but I went ahead and cooked this up because I need a little bit of this later on this week for some sides that I'm gonna be making. Um, so I figured I would just go ahead and cook all of it up and then I'll save what I don't need for a specific recipe this week and put it into a freezer bag and that way this will be really easy to add to breakfast burritos in the morning or a quiche or even biscuits and gravy. We can just reheat this up with a little extra oil and get the flour and ingredients in here to make some gravy and it'll be super quick and easy. So I went ahead and got that done. Okay, so we are going to switch gears for a minute. I do have one more lunch that I'd like to prep today. If I can't get to it, no big deal. Um, but I have this a box of Funfetti Unicorn uh, Pancake and a Waffle Mix. Uh, we already used a little bit of this box, so I wanna go ahead and just prep the rest of it in waffle form. So uh, I need some water, vegetable oil, and egg, and I'm just going to follow the measurements that are on this box however much dry mix I have in here, that's how much like water, oil, and eggs I will add. And I'm gonna use this dash because it makes four waffles at a time. I got this at Target. I can try to find it online and link it just in case you guys want one. I love the dash appliances. I have a bunch of like the one-off ones, but when I'm meal prepping and it's just waffles and I'm not using like the cutesy shape ones, I like to use this. Definitely makes my life a little easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these made up and in the freezer for a quick, easy breakfast option for the kids in the morning. Okay, I've got several waffles prepped for the freezer. Now I'm just going to bag them up. I've got it in a freezer bag. I did think I was gonna need two bags, but this day two of meal prepping is on the weekend and I've got like sticky fingers coming in here off and on all day while I'm in the kitchen stealing things. <laughs> so there are a couple of waffles missing, um, but my kids really did enjoy this box mix. So that was fun. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the freezer and then check my list and see what we can prep next. Okay, so I pulled out the sausage is completely cold. I pulled out what I wanted for the recipe. I might make this today, so I'm just gonna leave it in here for now. 
Um, and if I don't end up making it today, I'll transfer this to a little container and just put, put it in the refrigerator until I need it. But this bag is completely cooked and it is going in the freezer um, for just something to add to a quick breakfast one morning. So that is checked off of my meal prep list. All right, now we're going to move on to cheese. I have been shredding this as we need it <laughs> throughout the past a week, uh, just using my little hand shredder here. However, I wanna go ahead and get this shredded up so it's already done for me in the fridge. So I have the rest of this Colby Jack block, and then I have this entire block of mild cheddar cheese. And since I have so much, I am going to use my attachment. It's gonna shred it for me super quick. That just goes onto my KitchenAid. So that will be said and done. I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and then just bag it up and in the refrigerator. So we've got quick, easy cheese for all sorts of recipes. cheese is shredded and ready for us to use on whatever dinner or in recipes but it's ready and nice and convenient for us to grab throughout the next couple weeks all right, so like I said, I hope that gave you some meal prep inspiration. If you like these types of videos, give this one a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I need to go let the dogs out. They are scratching at the door, letting me know, hey, I've gotta go potty. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.